Hi, I'm Doug Pat, and this is How To Architect The Marina Bay Sands. Conventional buildings typically stand alone. Their structural and mechanical systems are designed to serve and support one building. The Marina Bay Sands in Singapore is not that kind of complex. The towers at the sands are the most prominent feature, and the floating structure at the top is a feat of engineering. Moshe Safdie was the architect, and the structural engineers were Arup. The resort opened in 2010. The complex consists of a series of buildings, including the visually remarkable hotel towers with Sky Park platform above, a convention center, mall, museum, theaters, restaurants, pavilions, and a massive casino. The multi-billion dollar complex of buildings is unique and remarkable. All three towers are asymmetrically shaped and flare at the base. The entire composition is also curved in plan. For this reason, the towers incorporate regularly spaced concrete shear walls as the primary vertical and transverse structural system. The raft-like sky park is the building's most amazing feature. It's 1,115 feet long and 131 feet wide and cantilevers 213 feet on one side. The park includes an infinity edge swimming pool with over 375,000 gallons of water. The structural system consists of post-tension 33 feet deep steel box girders plus large steel struts and trusses. The tricky part about having three separate buildings support one continuous building above is that buildings move independently of one another. For this reason, there are movement joints between each tower on the Sky Park, allowing for thermal expansion and wind loads. All this and yet, the pool still holds water. The dominant wind direction for the region is from the north, as we can see in these simulations by our friends at SimScale. The turbulent flow of wind from upstream creates complex flow patterns, particularly at the tail edge of the building. This simulation shows cut planes of wind flow at various heights. These are important here, as with any structure, because we can see the impact of wind at the pedestrian level and anywhere above. In this simulation, we can see the turbulent wind flow created by buildings upstream and its impact. The heavily transient wind flow around the hotel columns is clear and important for understanding structural loads. It's also clear at the top of the building that wind is actually recirculating enough that it's reversing direction. And in this simulation, taken from above the building, we can study vortices. These are the spinning areas of wind flow. Depending on the height and size of any building, wind flow patterns are critical for the development of its structural system. What's really cool about all these simulations is that they're available to everyone. As you might imagine, complex simulations like these are really expensive, especially for a small architectural firm like mine. But SimScale makes them available for free if you don't mind your results being available to the general public. On their site, you can actually view thousands of simulations from the community or adapt an existing simulation for your own use, and they run workshops regularly. If you're an architect, engineer, or designer, SimScale can not only be used to predict wind loads, but also to ensure pedestrian comfort, validate ventilation and air conditioning, and review air quality and thermal comfort. All you have to do is sign up and upload your model. So, thanks again to SimScale for these really cool simulations. And a huge thanks for free software that gives architects like me an incredibly powerful tool. I'm Doug Pat. We'll see you next time.